and beer truth. My glass is being poured. I am distracted from the flashing TV screens and the unforgiving cold of December by the cascading sound of beer. It glows amber against the warm lights, crowned in the white froth, a faint smell of orange traveling up the nostrils. I place my lips on the glass, holding it closely, feeling its sweat on my fingertips, the beer kissing me as I drink half a pint of what was supposed to be a sip, an action I will later moderate by nursing the rest of the approximated hour I have left at the bar stool, or at least until I decide to get another one. As I wipe the passionate affair off my first sip off of my lip, I have a brief moment of lucidness, the last moment before the next four hours when one beer turns into two, turns into three, turns into liquor, turns into a spinning room. I drink how I love, too much all at once and savoring every moment afterwards. There's a part of me that feels romantic. There's a part of me that replaces her laugh and her smile and the way she hugs me and glances at me from time to time. There's a part of me that wishes to savor these moments for as long as I can balance them on the tip of my tongue. There's a part of me that chooses to see things where they do not exist. My glass stands half full, condensation gone, crown removed, amber glow dissipating. There should be a beauty for things have gone. There should be a warm memory of the things lived. But as I realize how a quick one inevitably turns into another night of penitence, I settle into the routine. There is a part of me that feels anxious. There's a part of me that has been writing and deleting the same message. There's a part of me that keeps hovering over her name on the phone. There's a part of me that knows the lies I told myself. I drink how I love, greedily and with regrets. Thank you all so much. Uh, again, I'm also part of a band called We The Things. We play yeah. folk punk. Um, we're, uh, I like to say that if we're not good, I think we're pretty fun. <laughs> I think we have some good energy. <laughs> so follow our Instagram. It's we underscore the underscore things. I'm just going to do one last one, and that'll be it. This is called Ifs and Maybes. It's 6.08 and you're late. You're in traffic, sitting in a hot car that smells like cigarettes and weed behind a blue beat-up uh, be beat truck that has had their left blinker stuck for the past three streets and that could very well go left or right or straight ahead, but you won't know until the light turns green. You tap your finger on the steering wheel to the rhythm of the blinker and think about how this is a perfect metaphor for mixed signals. And the corner of your mouth turns into a smirk because of how deep and insightful you're being right now. The truck advances and, surprise, it turns left exactly like it said it would. After stepping back to reality from the overly pretentious and douchey way of thinking that everything is a metaphor and that all things revolve around you, you realize that you are parking and that you don't really want to be here. You don't really want to be anywhere. And you haven't for a while. It's 6.11 now and at a certain point you made it from your home through the border highway to a restaurant you've never tried but confidently suggested, each mile of the car ride chipping away from the desire of attending a meeting that you set up. You invited her here so you could see her, of course, because that's who you've been thinking of all summer. Because you look back through old text threads and carry out the labor of a work-at-home emotional archaeologist, analyzing and archiving and dating every little detail that even suggests that you might have a chance. And every chance you find, you fall away in a little museum that you built in your head that gives you comfort and that makes you feel less alone. If you don't look at it too closely or for too long, you can almost pretend that it's real. One bad Indiana Jones allegory later, you are seated, and there she is, beautiful, because she always is. She's wearing the same green flowery dress you've seen her with at work, and those slightly rose-tinted glasses that have a tiny crack off to the side, and you steal glimpses of the way she holds her lipstick-stained straw, and you try your hardest not to look at her, because today really is the last time. You'll say it's the last time. You want to live in this moment as you want to live in every moment you're with, you share with her. You still remember her telling you, you look at me like you love me, and you think about how stupid it was of you to smile and shrug when she said that. And you think about how even though you were never together, these moments have meant more to you than any other person you have been with. If this isn't love, I don't know what is, you think confidently, before realizing that you really don't know what love is and that you're worried you never will. So you eat and you catch up and you listen and you nod and you do your dumb little inside jokes that make her laugh, a laugh that means the world to you. And now it's 6.57 and you know it's time. Your watch has never been as interesting as it is today. It never has been as important, and all the talk about timing comes back to you all at once. Soon you're having a similar conversation to the one you've had before, and you think about how you're not that good of a listener, because even though you know where the conversation is going next, the very fact that this conversation is happening again means that you're an asshole. Consciously or not, you finally reveal yourself, the ugly, selfish little goblin that has been eating away at you and screaming and clawing away at your previous sense of composure is out. You realize again that if you talk less about your insecurities, it would be easier to hide them 
yet you opened up with a carefully curated collection of stupidity. I think you like me less now that you know me better, and that's okay if you do. You don't have to worry about us being more than friends because I'm not going to pursue it anymore. I desperately want to be in your life, even if we're not together. You think about that time when you worked at Starbucks and you dropped all of the dirty mop water on the floor at closing and you slipped and you somehow tried to keep mopping mid-fall, attempting to maneuver the spill into the bucket as your ass hit the ground, and somehow that situation feels better managed and much less embarrassing than whatever the fuck you decided to do just right now. You ask her if she's angry and, says that, and she says that she's not, but you don't believe her. She says that maybe if she had met you before, things would be different. Maybe if she had met you after, things would be different but it's not before or after, and it never will be. So you stop checking your watch. <laughs>